My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. That one? Yep. All right. Little guy. Not the toad we're looking for, huh? Nice. Little guy. Here's a better one. All right. There's a big brownie. That's what we're after. Stick. Is there really? Yeah. <laughs> I was getting ready to net for you. <laughs> That's what we're You'll have to hold that one up to the camera. <laughs> Trophy. That's one of them finless browns. That's the brown we're looking for. And yeah, midweek, my buddy's like, dude, the fish are gone. It cooled down. There's two cold fronts. Yeah. Two days this week. And then I a lot of a lot of wind and it just turned this bay from 55 degrees. And it was pushing 60s, you know, throughout the day as the as the water temps would warm up, it would get up in the 60s. Wow. And then just bam, 47. And with overcast, it's not supposed to be super sunny. I, I don't know, I don't see it turning on today. Yeah, I mean, we could make a run and do some largey fishing. At this point, it was clear that our plan to come out here and do a pre-spawn smallmouth bass episode wasn't going to happen. But luckily, this is Champlain, and there are plenty more options. During pre-spawn conditions such as this, there are really only two lures you'll need. There's one. A square bell crankbait and a jerkbait. There's a large mouth. Both of these lures are great options during the spring and cold weather here conditions. Comes. John stuck with colors that seemed to match the dying owl wives that were floating all around us, whereas I experimented with brighter colored options. Feel how warm he is. <laughs> oh yeah. Not a monster, but it's a start. Square bills are great for locating active feeding fish. There's one. Whereas the jerkbait shines when these fish are feeling lethargic. Feels like a good one. Before the spawn, you'll often find schools of bass with a mixture of lethargic and active feeding fish, making the square bill and the jerkbait a deadly combo. I'm getting better. All right. So what I'm doing now is running a square bill crankbait along the edges of these rocks. I want to make sure that the crankbait is making contact with the bottom, and this will help attract the fish. Square bills run nose down in the water, which causes it to deflect off of objects that it makes contact with. As it's grinding along the bottom, it stirs up a lot of silt and really draws attention to itself. Our decision to move south in search of largemouth bass paid off almost immediately. In just a 10 mile move, we found water temperatures that were 10 to 12 degrees warmer. At this particular location, the jerkbait nice. was out fishing a square bill about 3 to 1. Not a big one, but they're fat this time of year. In the warmer water temperatures, John's using a relatively quick twitch twitch pause sequence with his jerkbait. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Just like last time, remember that? The key was saying, I think we should move. Here he comes, he's coming hot. There we go. Nice. That's a good one. Came right off this side. Yeah. Champlain largemouth. With each twitch of the rod, 
The jerkbait violently dodges left to right. You got one? Yep. And then comes to a rest, suspended in the water column during the pause. Oh. Here he comes! Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, Tom! <laughs> Oh, sweet. And that's good right there. That's yeah. a beauty. Big belly. That was in the four pound range, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's probably closing in on five. There's a good one. Yeah, pulled a lot harder coming this way. <laughs> That's a paper tournament six pounder at least. Yeah. <laughs> Our plan B strategy is to jump between as many rocky points as we can in a short amount of time. These points are loaded with pre-spawn bass and if we hit them, move on and then come back again later, they will reload with bass again and again. This wind should be good on both of those spots. Oh, it's, ooh, it's a big one. You got a good one? Right at the side of the boat. After getting whooped by John at the other location, I decided to tie on a jerk bait as well. <laughs> nice one. Nice. That's more like it. I'm using a Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus jerk bait with a jig skins perch photo that has been shrink wrapped over the top All of it. Right. The bold colors I was using before didn't seem to be working as well as the natural patterns John was throwing, so I figured this would be a great choice. Because of the jerk pause action of a jerk bait, the bass tend to get a better look at it. Even though the water is murky, the natural patterns seem to make a difference. What you can't see on the surface is that these rocky points extend far out from the visible shoreline. This particular point comes out about 40 or 50 feet from the shoreline and is riddled with large boulders, rebar, and all kinds of snags, which There's the fish the love. That feels like a smallie. Here he comes. There's a decent one. He choked that lure. Yeah. He hit it hard. And that was on the square bell? Yeah. Yes, it was. There we go. Good one. Nah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not terrible. You got him? Flip him? Uh, I'm going with this line. There we go. That one knocked slack right in my line. Hold on. Oh, pickerel. Never mind. <laughs> I, I mean, I can get it, but. <laughs> yeah. Somehow we managed to get this hook through both lips. There we go. Oh, someone else's square bill. It was fishing line. I was <laughs> catch of the day right there. All right, that's actually a that's not a bad little pattern either. Whoa, look at that gar! Did you see Where? that? It, right there, like uh, straight out from the the tree right there. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it just surfaced. 
Well, there's another one right there. That would explain why we're not catching Oh, there's bass. another one. They're all There's over like the place. 10 of them. Yeah. Oh, you think we can catch a guard? Oh, yeah. They're, they must be spawning there. Look, there yeah. are hundreds of them. Yeah. Well, that would explain why the bass moved out. What the They're probably They could be spawning up on that other wall, too. I've never seen that many guards. Oh yeah, I have. When because they, what they do is these spots, like even up by that first spot that we hit, every year the gar will move in and the bass move out. I they, got one. Really? Yep. On the square bill? Yep. Net. Oh, it's a good one. How do you even net this? Grab him, dude. Nice. That is awesome. He oh. crushed it. I want one of those. Big old long nose gar. <laughs> ah. Just punched me. Wow. Dang. Well, we originally set up to target smallies. Found 47 degree water, headed down south and caught a mixed bag. I got one. Oh, nice. He bit it too. Oh, oh man, he right in there. His mouth. Yeah, I saw it. That was awesome. And he was right up in shore. I saw that. Did you see the group that you went right over the back yeah, of? Yeah, I did. Thanks, sir. How many species is that today? After the rain picked up, we shut down the main camera in order to protect it. But all in all, we had a great day after switching to Plan B. We ended up with a solid bag of largemouth bass and a total of six different species. Yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.